talking tropics with you at 546. Let's do tropical storm air. We got our 5 a.m. update. The consistent question that I, I keep getting text message to me by folks, emails as well. Is it really going to turn? Is it really going to turn? OK, is the turn to the north going to happen? That is a good question. I want to go over some important dates, important days of the week that we need to watch. OK, uh, because it is too early to tell while modeling is trending that way. Yes, still too early uh, to, to truly let our guards down. So we need to prepare uh, even though as we are, uh, whether it turns or not, we are getting to that peak of Atlantic hurricane season. So we got to watch. So let's get to Friday and Friday is an important date because that's when we could potentially get our first hurricane actually named first hurricane official for the Atlantic season. Let's get into our weekend. Uh, all right, so really into Sunday. So we watch Saturday, Sunday. Uh, that's when we could have a major hurricane, a category three storm. So some strengthening happening over very warm water. Uh, Sunday, Monday is important. All right, because that's when we would begin to see that that gradual slowdown in forward speed. OK, we'll see that you have to have the storm slow down before it can turn to the north. So we'll see a slowdown in speed and ultimately that turn. That's what we need to watch for on Monday. So Friday, Sunday, Monday, very important days as uh, we watch. We kind of remain that patient uh, with this storm, which is tough. I know we get that that kind of hurricane anxiety, but I will say I mentioned most, if not all, 99% uh, of our computer modeling right now really consistent with that more northern track uh, with just a couple of outliers. But uh, you got to look at the consistency in those runs and we've been getting it kind of run after run after run with that uh, northern track. So what's going to happen? Uh, you've got a pretty good blocking high right now that's actually going to force this storm to, to travel a little bit further south before a weakness in the ridge, almost like this ridge splits into your Bermuda high goes out further to the east. You get uh, a high shifting more uh, over the Mississippi River Valley. As that happens, the weakness in that ridge provides a path of least resistance as well as that steering current to pull the storm, slow it down and then ultimately pull it towards the north. Now your two main global models that we talk about all the time, the European model and the American model. So your Euro, your GFS, you see Euro in yellow, GFS in, in that blue, pretty consistent through August 18th. So f uh, five days from now, that would be getting to Sunday with the storm being a hurricane, tight concentric circles looking like a bullseye. You see that those isobars indicating a stronger storm, both consistent in pulling up and away. Now there is differences in how far east, how far west, but generally speaking, your GFS, your Euro have been pretty tight along those uh, same lines. So we also need to watch important date. And speaking of important dates, if the turn were to occur when latitudinally this system would be a beam of Jacksonville and southeast Georgia. So we're talking Wednesday for some of our greatest wave heights. Those will begin to build uh, Monday, Tuesday, and then by Wednesday, we're talking small craft advisories, large swells, potential for some uh, minor coastal flooding along the St. Johns River, the tributaries, the intracoastal waterway with some full marshes. We'll watch those high tides, but uh, those would be our main impacts if this current modeling holds. Heat alerts in place, though, as we go through our Wednesday from 11 to 7 today, already very warm, 81 degrees, 95 with triple digit heat index values for a Wednesday, and we could see some of those storms begin to pop around 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. Some isolated to scattered storms possible in that summer pattern. Right, let's check our commute right now.